Hello everybody! Welcome to Creating the Basic Adaptable Game Engine Library, Part 37, Animation Class Design. In the previous video, we talked about what animations are, their sequence of images which are displayed quickly. In order to incorporate this into our games, we'll create a class named Animation to store all this data for us. In this video, we'll talk about what needs to go into an animation class for our framework. Well, first, since an animation is a sequence of images, we need a sequence of images. In this case, we'll use a list to store them. And what we'll actually store are texture objects. And just as a reminder, a texture contains an image together with a rectangle. And when we first created the texture class, it might not have been clear. Why do we need to specify a rectangle? Won't we always be drawing the entire image? And it's in preparation for this class that a texture also contains a rectangle object, telling us what part of the texture will be drawn. So when we set up an animation in the constructor, one of the first things we'll do is we'll create a list of texture objects. We'll do that by loading a single image, and we won't load the image anew every time we want to create a new texture, but all these texture objects will share the same image reference, and each one will have a different rectangle, specifying the region of the image we'd like to draw. Within the animation class, it will also be important to store the time that each frame of the animation will be displayed. Generally, this will be a very small number to create a realistic animation. We probably want to do between 10 and 20 frames per second. So the time to display each frame will likely be between a tenth of a second and a twentieth of a second. So a fairly small number, but we need to know what that is. We'll also store the total elapsed time. That will be the total amount of time that this animation has been playing, and that will help us determine which frame of the animation should be displayed later on. And finally, in the constructor, we need the information to set this up. To create the list of texture objects, not only will we need the name of the image file, but we'll need to know how many rows and columns are in that image so we can create our rectangular regions for each texture correctly. We'll need to know the duration that each frame is going to be displayed. And we'll also need something I call a loop setting. In other words, when we get to the end of the animation, does the animation stop or does the animation repeat from the beginning? Some animations, like perhaps an explosion, well, that would just occur once and then stop. You can imagine another animation, such as a wheel spinning around and around, that might just continue to repeat. So this will be some kind of a Boolean variable, which we'll need to take into account as well. Does the animation loop to the beginning once it's finished? And there will be two important methods, in addition to the constructor that we need to write. We'll need to write something called get current texture, and that tells us which of these texture objects in the list should be displayed, and that's going to depend on the elapsed time. Basically, we'll take the elapsed time and combine that information with how much time each frame should be displayed. We'll use that to figure out the index of the texture in the list that we're going to display. Once we've written that method, the other method we'll need to write is an update method. And that's basically going to increment the total elapsed time. And in addition, once we get past the total time required for the animation, does the animation continue? Does it restart? Does it stop? So depending on the loop setting that was specified in the constructor, I, it, we have to do more than just update and add to the elapsed time. I mean, depending on how much elapsed time has passed, that time might start over again. So this is what we're going to have to think about when we start writing the animation class. 
In the next video, we'll actually go ahead and start writing this code. And in the video after that, we'll go ahead and integrate it into our Starfish Collector game. But that's the plan, and we'll start it in the next video. Thanks for watching.